I'm Ali Patterson. On this episode of Fintech Finance, we take a look at new banks and legacy. For this, we speak with Manbu, New10 and N26. I spoke to Manbu to hear about how they aim to offer a digital service as opposed to a traditional model. When a prospect comes to us and they say, I want to do a project with Mambo, whether it's going to be a new product or a new market or they're doing some transformation, they're not looking at just simply how do I do things um, differently than the old core. They're thinking about how do I build an uh, operating model with the right sort of services and the right technologies which are fundamentally different than the old one. So they're looking actually at the digital process from their side of it and saying, okay, which steps did we do manually that we can automate, what technology is available, and how can Mambu support that whole entire end-to-end -end process as being, you know, like I said, a digital platform. But they're thinking about the digital process from the customer point of view. And there might be engagements where they say, you know what, actually at this point of the journey, we do want to have a person that talks to them. We do want to have someone that looks at the business model of this corporate we want to lend to. And so part of that process will be manual, but it's a conscious choice because they've looked at the options available to digitize it and automate it, and they realize, you know what, actually doing this with people is actually still the best option for that. But at least they've rethought of the whole entire journey for the, for the customer and the servicing model, and they tried to figure out how do they actually digitize it end-to-end -end and what should they digitize. I was interested to hear from U10 about the ways that they use technology to really enhance the customer experience. Uh, I think the key thing there is uh, using technology for the sake of improving the customer journey and not just technology for the sake of technology. And uh, what I think is technology is a wonderful thing in the sense that you really think about how it impacts the way that the customer has to uh, get along. Uh, and let me give a few examples. Uh, for banks, it's very important if they provide credit to the customers to do a lot of know your customer checks. This is very logical. You need to know where you're lending to. Uh, but uh, traditionally, banks ask a lot of paperwork in order to do those checks. Uh, they ask you to stop uh, by uh, at the office, at the branch, deliver all these documents, and then a couple of weeks later, you get the result. What we say is, OK, we want to leverage information that's already out there, for example, in the Chamber of Commerce, get a, a real-time interface, and then collect that information from the Chamber of Commerce and display it to the customer. So he doesn't have to enter it himself. He uh, just uses the information that's already readily available. Another example is signing. Traditionally, people have to st stop by at the branch to do the signing. With us, it's possible to sign digitally at your own time from your own house, and you can do it at a other time than your wife or uh, your partner. So that makes it uh, very easy to do the whole process fully digitally. So if you look at the whole process in total, within 15 minutes at New10, as an entrepreneur, you know whether you can get a loan and at what rates. And within 48 hours, the whole package is signed and you got the money disbursed on your account. And that's possible because of technology. I sent Lea Jacobiak to speak with N26. Powered by Manbu. To hear about the innovations they're working on in the user experience space. And in Europe, a lot of um, challenger banks are doing well thanks to the slick um, mm -hmm. user experience. Yeah. Um, uh, what, where do you stand when it comes to that? What sort of innovations are you guys working on yeah. in that space? Our product is strong because we have one of the, the best product teams uh, around the world, I would say, that is constantly working on making our user experience better. And that starts from if you sign up for an account, if you open an account, it takes you a couple of minutes and you're done without filling out any papers. Um, when you do a transaction, you get a push, a push message in the same second. It's automatically clustered in where you have been spending. You get a hashtag. If you do a, a transfer to someone, yeah, it's a very, very easy and smooth process. Um, and I think what people shouldn't forget is that to have an outstanding user experience in banking, what you need is you have to have kind of the backbone. And what we did is we got our own banking license, so we're a fully licensed bank in Germany, um, and then we own all the technology systems behind. So we could integrate a lot of the value chain and then put forward a very great and, and, and easy to use product. I wanted to hear from Eugene from Mambu about what some of the problems might be for challenger banks looking to scale up. We're now starting to see the first wave of new banks or neo banks or whatever you want to call them really starting to scale up. What are some of the issues going to be when scaling up and what will these issues be from a core banking perspective? 
I think for them, scaling up to the number of customers will not be a challenge beyond, of course, their marketing efforts and how they, um, how they go and acquire customers, so making sure they have a viable cost to acquisition of customers. I think for them to take those initial customers and what they're usually starting off with, especially if you're someone that's focused on consumers, it's usually sort of a freemium model, right? You offer a current account initially as a way to get them in, but usually business usually don't make as much money out of it. So then figuring out how do you kind of take that customer which loves your new brand, they love the engagement they have, they love the, your mobile app experience, they, they really love working with you as a, as a partner, but they, they need to then take it into a new commercial model, either bringing together an ecosystem of other fintech offerings they can bring to them, or bringing additional products like mortgages or like loans and others which they can start to offer them, which then help to give them additional uh, commercial model behind it, or make the service experience and so terrific that customers will be willing to pay you know, a monthly fee just for the fact that they, it's a premium service effectively and I'm perfectly happy to pay $5 a month for my great experience with this current account as opposed to my bank which makes me, makes me send faxes and I hate visiting, right? So it could become either a premium model or they can offer kind of additional services and I think that would be kind of the challenge for them to kind of to, uh, offer uh, additional products. Oh, with that, with looking to offer additional products, what does that scalability really mean from a sort of core technology stack perspective? If they build out the technology right and they're working with a partner, with a partner like Mambu, then the technology scalability really shouldn't be an issue. It becomes a question of making sure they do things operationally supported by technology the right way. So they want to make sure that if they have, uh, you know, they have a business of which focus on current accounts and they say, hey, let's offer also deposits, let's also start to offer different loans, that each of those different business units are also as operationally, technologically independent because otherwise effectively you can also just build one large siloed kind of institution and it becomes very difficult for them to move. So making sure they give as much operational flexibility to different teams from a technology and operations point of view I think becomes really critical for them to keep their pace of growth and their ability to keep being agile and innovative. So you're a bank and you have your core banking platform, probably a couple of decades old. On top of that, you need to have customer experience set up. So you have that all plugged in there. You then have foundations for an AML network. You start to build that, say, here. We also have a payments network. So we start to build that there. And before you know it, the customer experience setup has changed again and we need to have various plugins. So we start to construct these, say, around there. And then all of a sudden, regulation comes in. A lot of AML, KYC technologies plug directly into that to make sure that everything is fine. We then have a change in payment networks. And before you know it, we need to have some sort of online banking with various plugins for that. So we bring in a new CRM element and say, and then there's a mobile phone part of online banking with another security plugin that needs to be installed there and so forth. Before you know it, our system's looking to be very complicated. All of a sudden, technology increases and we need to plug in all sorts of networks. We suddenly have to change our regulation setup, our AML setup, more demand on customer experience, more demand on security. Suddenly we have to do a lot around cybersecurity and make it very customer focused. Before you know it, regulation changes again, customer demands change, security changes, and you have to pile on a lot more technology, all still off the base core banking system. Very quickly, the system starts to fall apart. What Mambu does is take, using Amazon Web Services, a cloud-based, flexible approach where you can take all of the previous elements and build them together in a secure, solid fashion. And the key is, because it's web-based, because it's flexible and agile, even if, say, we don't want to use this bit of software anymore, it doesn't cause the system to collapse. And that's the beauty of Mambu. You end up with a system that is flexible, not just for present day scenarios, but for the future. Can you tell us a little bit around your customer base, both for customers that have started 
from the absolute get-go on Mambu, but those that have also had a kind of a mini digital transformation and had your platform brought into them? Yeah, so for, for some fintechs, they often start out as a very monoline sort of product. So they start as something that's very focused on a specific geography and a specific product line, right? And they build out a solution for that. But then they realize that they have to expand out to additional products, they expand to, to different geographies. And the technology which, which they built, which was very well suited for that initial purpose, is kind of holding them back. And so oftentimes that's why we're engaging with quite a few of the fintechs as well, because instead of them focusing on re-transforming all of the core technology they have, they would really much rather focus actually on the customer experience, on the credit scoring, and uh, the digital engagement, if you will, and then allowing us to provide the technology that, which enables them to bring their new products to market. So that's why we're working with quite a few fintechs who then start to work with us as that platform which they use for these markets with an overall strategy then to move some of their old legacy, their new legacy, if you will, uh, onto us. And what's been really the reaction? Because I know, for example, you work with N26. How was it for them moving from a effectively a partner bank to, to your platform? It gave them a lot more operational flexibility, right? With a partner bank, of course, they had a different commercial model with the, with the bank, and now as their own bank, they can control their own destiny. And Mambo provides them that ability as well, in terms of the sort of products they want to offer, the, the fees they want to charge, if they want to go into different types of lending, they're able to roll that out. They're able to also expand geographically. They are obviously have announced their plans to move to the UK and the US and it gives them a technological flexibility to be able to bring these models to different markets and bring the additional products to market to their existing customer base as well. So it gives them a lot of that operational flexibility, which for a rapidly growing company like that is really key so they can, uh, they can rapidly iterate in the products which are working in their markets. N26, we've, we found it kind of the, the most and fastest growing mobile bank in Europe today. Yes. And uh, I think we've based our product on, on making uh, the customer experience in mobile banking as easy as you when you use Spotify or Google Maps. Yes. And I think this easy user experience has been key to our success. Mm -hmm. And I think today we've reached more than 500,000 customers in just uh, about two years of existence, two and a half years. So what we're actually seeing is um, that most customers around the world mm -hmm. actually have a need for a better banking product. Everything on, based on transparent fees and, and a lot of transparency in general. Okay. And um, why is now a good time to, to expand in the UK and the US? So I think in general what we've, what we've um, recognized is that most of the banks have a, a very slow in putting forward great digital products. Mm -hmm. um, I think most of them are ripping off customers with high fees. Uh, I think the needs for, for digital generation are very, very similar. It's always great usability on the product, it's transparency, and it's fairness in pricing. And I think that three things that's easily, that for us are easily scalable around Europe and also around the UK and then also in the US. Now, what you see is what we notice from insights and research is that the customer, a lot of the times, find banks really a black box. They ask a question and don't know exactly at what moment in time they get an answer back. And so we said we definitely need to change it. So what we do is we immediately provide an answer. It can be a no as well, but people like a no if you give it in 50 minutes. If you give a no after three weeks, it's annoying because you spent a lot of time on it. So we immediately give clarity. Of course, we are going for the yes because we want to do business as well. So we want to help the biz help entrepreneurs grow their business. So that's the first thing, and I think that's a major insight. Giving that back, it's so small, it's so easy, uh, but that's what we're doing. Yeah. And you are a German bank, but you're currently expanding internationally as uh, you're growing so rapidly. How do you uh, deal with the regulatory challenges that comes with that? On the European side, I think. We do have um, a European uh, bank license, so by the ECB, which is yes. a, a central regulator uh, in Europe. Um, and that really allows us to passport our license from initially Germany into other European markets. So that's really helpful. So I think th this, this sort of like uh, regulation is very helpful for us uh, in Europe. Sort of transatlantic um, uh, regulations uh, are different. So for us here, as we're trying to set up shop, uh, here in the US and bring a product to market in 2018, uh, we really do need to be careful about yeah. local regulations here in the US. I also wanted to find out the importance of integrating with fintechs and where the future of the industry stands. Why is this important for the bank of 2018? 
I think most technology companies that exist right now, especially modern ones, see themselves as part of an API-enabled ecosystem. There's tons of great products and solutions out there which solve individual problems. And the challenge for a service provider, especially a financial service one, is making sure you put the right pieces of technology of the puzzle together in the right way. The API economy is critical to the success of all these service providers. And having a platform like Mambo, which has open APIs from the beginning, makes it very easy for to comply with things like PSD do effectively, where it's about exposing your data and being able to interact with it. So if you have APIs and you have an API-enabled ecosystem solution, then the complying with something like PSD 2, 2 becomes trivial because it's just simply another endpoint and another uh, API interaction which you have as part of your service. But if that's not something that you kind of have already in your DNA and your operating model and your technology to support, then it becomes a very big challenge because you have lots of siloed system, you have data in different places, it becomes extremely difficult to be able to present that to the outside world or be able to take requests from the outside world and process that internally because your system is too siloed and too closed off from the rest of the world. But API-enabled companies are built with that in mind. So for them, something like PSD2 is, is a trivial issue to handle. And for a bank in 2018, what are some of the things that they will be able to do through having this kind of open API model that can plug into the, directly to the core system? And enables them to do quite a few things. I mean, enables them to be able to, first of all, when they look internally, to design a lot of their internal processes, automate a lot of processes, and use APIs internally within the organization to automate processes, to come up with this with the unique business rules without having to actually get in and customize complex systems. So that enables them, gives them internal value. And very importantly, it enables them to play within the API ecosystem and then look for best of breed products and technologies with it, which they can integrate into their client offering. Whether it's something to do with biometric uh, client onboarding or identification, or whether it's with alternative payments uh, service providers, or whether it's without, with big data credit decisioning systems, they're able to take these services and add them to their overall offering effectively. How do you really expect the entire industry to change and evolve over the next few years? There will be a lot of changes, starting with the customer expectations, because customers and entrepreneurs are really looking for a more seamless way of getting their loans, a personal way, a personal touch whether it's from the contact via chat that Mark talked about or uh, via personal insights. And it's about clarity throughout the entire process. And clarity also involves uh, clarity about the privacy involved. So the, the seamless, personal and clear, those are really the, the, uh, the demands from the customer which we have to cater for. If you look within the sector, then I think banks are uh, trying to, uh, to come up with propositions to surface those uh, demands uh, and technology will help them in a big way. Uh, one of the changes that will uh, pop up next year is PSD2, uh, access to accounts, which will a uh, regulation which will enable all kind of parties to access the information in the bank account and also do the payment transactions so it becomes possible for non-banks to surface customers with those uh, uh, access. And for us, it would entail that uh, customers do not have to upload their transaction data anymore, but they can give us access to that transaction data, which will enable a very smooth uh, way of providing their information, which will enable us to do the full uh, process on mobile only. So there you see that the regulation triggers the availability of uh, transaction data, which triggers uh, basically uh, the opens the path for a full mobile journey. And that's such a big change because what we see now is that entrepreneurs also for the business like the mobile phone as their main device. So if you enable an entrepreneur to go to the entire process on his mobile, he will love it. And as New10, we believe that we have a role to play, a right to win even, if we uh, specialize ourselves in understanding risk, but also redefining risk as something that is not just assessing our own risk, but assessing the health of a company and really being the partner of an entrepreneur, uh, providing quick uh, responses to any liquidity needs, but also insights so he can steer his business towards a, a growth. Uh, and, and then again, technology will help us because it's on the mobile, we have better uh, connections, but we can also partner up because uh, APIs uh, allow multiple partners to work together 
to create propositions that are even better for the customer. So what we're currently exploring with multiple partners is to see whether we can up with creative ways of uh, new propositions, uh, for example, uh, to finance working capital, uh, where we say, okay, we can combine the strength of multiple companies, offer that to the customer in a seamless way, and then be able to offer better loans, more insight, uh, and a seamless journey altogether. On the next episode of FinTech Finance, we take a look at GDPR and secure messaging. Thank you.